Today we're going to talk about the NMOS transistor output characteristics. And the reason we care about this is we want to use transistors in the context of a circuit. So we need to understand how the current through the transistor behaves when there's different voltages applied at the terminals. And a good example of this is that if we were to connect a voltage source across the terminals of a resistor, we were to sweep this voltage source B, we would know what to expect the current to be, right? And we could just draw that. We could draw the IV characteristic. We know it would look like a line like this, and the slope of this line is equal to R. So in the same way that we can do this for a resistor, we want to do this for a MOS transistor. So let's try it. So here's my MOS device. We're going to do, today we're going to do an NMOS device. So we've got our gate, our drain, and our source. The voltage between the drain and the source, this is VDS. The voltage between the gate and the source is VGS. And what we really care to know is the drain current ID as we vary these voltages at the terminals. And we're just going to plot it and we're going to look at it. Okay, so starting with ID versus VDS. Um, it's also a little bit helpful for us to just um, put the source at ground. So basically, since um, the source is at ground, we can just vary VD. Um, so VD can go all the way from zero volts all the way up to VDD. Um, this is another term for the supply voltage. Those are interchangeable. All right, so first let's start with VGS set to zero. So the gate is grounded, the source is grounded, and now what we're going to do is we're going to sweep VD from zero all the way up to the supply voltage. And we're going to think about what happens. So it's helpful for us to draw the cross section of the device. What that means is if I were to take this MOSFET, I were to cut it, flip it on its side and look at it, that's the cross section. So we've got a P minus body because it's an NMOS device, so it lives in a P minus body. We've got these N plus source and drain regions right here. We've got silicon dioxide and a thick polysilicon gate. All right, so we're gonna label this the source, here's the gate and here's the drain. All right, what does all this mean? So silicon CMOS devices are made out of silicon. Silicon is a semiconductor, meaning it is a ish metal. So what's cool about silicon is it can be doped, meaning we can add impurities to it to change its conductivity or its resistance and make it have certain properties. So for the case of this N plus source and drain regions, impurities are added and N plus is heavily doped. So this means it has a very low resistance and there are a lot of electrons in these areas that are ready to contribute to current flow. They're ready to party. And this P, P minus region is a lightly doped region and its carriers are holes. So these are positively charged uh, mobile carriers. So initially when there's no gate voltage applied to this, the region in between the source and the drain is a high resistance uh, region and there's no current that's flowing in between the source and the drain. So it doesn't matter if I sweep uh, VDD from zero all the way up to the supply voltage, I'm just gonna move right along this X axis right here. So ID is equal to zero this entire time. There's no current flowing. So this is like an open switch. So here's my source, here's my drain, and for VGS is equal to zero, the MOSFET looks like an open switch. Now what happens if we increase VGS um, so that we can get current to flow. Now we're going to increase VGS to a value that's going to be bigger than what's known as the threshold voltage. So VGS is bigger than VT. What does that mean? Well, if I apply a positive gate voltage right here, I'm going to repel the positive charge carriers that are directly located under the gate in this P minus region, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncover fixed ions that have a negative charge. So if I apply enough of a gate voltage, what I can do is I can repel enough of the positive charge carriers and uncover enough of those uh, negative ions that I'm actually changing what this layer looks like. I'm making this surface directly underneath the gate look like it's n-type when really it's, it was p-type, but now I've applied enough of a positive gate voltage that it looks n-type. This is called inverting the surface or inversion. And this happens at a gate voltage of VT. So we're going to make VGS, the applied voltage between the gate and the source, big enough that I invert this layer underneath the gate. And now I have a conductive path for, channel, um, for charge to flow between the source and the drain. Okay, now what happens? 
So the drain current looks something like this for, um, we're gonna call this VGS1, and this is bigger than VT. So I should call this VGS1. Okay, so initially, if I had VGS is equal to zero, I swept VD all the way from zero to VDD, and I was right here. I had no drain current flowing. I had um, VD was at its highest possible voltage, and so the voltage between the drain and the source was as big as it could possibly be. Now we're gonna apply some positive gate voltage so that the transistor is on. So we actually jump up to this operating point right here. So now we have drain current flowing. How much drain current do we have flowing? We've got this much drain current flowing. Okay, so as the drain current starts to flow, you can think of it as pulling charge out of this node, out of, out of um, the drain node. And so the drain voltage is going to start to drop, meaning it's going to get closer and closer to Vs. So you can think of it as traversing this curve right here. And it's going to continue to drop until a certain point when it gets all the way down to zero. right? So now there's no longer any difference between the drain and the source voltage. There's no longer any current flowing in the transistor. And what's happening here? What's happening here is the source and the drain are now equal and I have a closed switch. So in this scenario, my MOSFET looks like a closed switch. Now we can keep drawing these curves for different values of VGS, and they're just kind of gonna look like this. So this could be VGS2, VGS3. Let's think about what's happening in, in these different areas. Well, one of the things that's interesting to look at here is there's a difference between the regions that the MOSFET is operating in over here and over here. To the right of this dotted line, for example, it looks like the drain voltage can change a lot. It can go from a pretty small value all the way up to the supply voltage, and the drain current stays pretty constant. So what this tells us is in these regions over here, everything to the right of the dotted line, VDS is not in control of the MOSFET. What's happening at the, between the drain and the source is not controlling the current that's coming out of this device. So that's pretty interesting. Now everything to the right of this dotted line, that's not the case, right? Because VD is only changing a little bit, but the amount of drain current is changing a lot, right? This almost looks, almost looks linear. This could, this could be a resistor for all we know, right? So in this region of operation over here, uh, to the left of the dotted line, this is known as the triode region. And um, you can think of this as a voltage control resistor. And everything to the right of this dotted line, this is known as the saturation region because the current has saturated, it's at some maximum value. Now, what's really useful for us is if we were to put this MOSFET in a circuit. So let's add a load resistor to this. So now the supply voltage is up here, we've got some load resistor R, and let's draw the transfer characteristic of the load resistor, right? So we, we talked about this earlier. It's just gonna be a linear line and it's gonna have this slope equal to R. Cool. What are these intersection points right here? Well, these intersection points are actually the operating points of this circuit. So for this particular resistor, for this particular MOSFET that has these output transfer characteristics, these are the operating points of the circuit. If I apply VGS2 to this circuit, this is my drain to source voltage and this is how much drain current I get. This is actually known as load line analysis, and it's a pretty cool way to look at how the circuit is operating.